Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. So, first I will, I want to give some references at least. So, more, uh, you would have studied probably in Combinator Algebra 1 or uh, Algebra 2, you call it Algebra 2, right? I call it uh, Combinator Algebra 0, let us say, right? So, that is Atiyah McDonald, Atiyah McDonald's very famous book, very, very uh, well written and uh, lot of exercises. Um, and the other uh, book is this Eisenberg Committed to Algebra with a view toward algebra geometry. I myself have not read this book uh, very much because uh, by the time I finished my studies etc. this book was not there. So I will read it this time if possible but I when I read few pages I felt a little bit it is not rigorous. So. I don't know, I will not going to follow either Atia McDonald or Eisenberg or any book which I will state here word to word. I will keep changing uh, the proofs etc. Right? So another one is this, uh, this book uh, which is uh, I co-authored with my senior uh, author that is Stosh and this book actually is first three chapters if you see they are the preparation for proving uh, a theorem called Riemann-Roch theorem. But so, first three chapters are committed to algebra basically. It was, it is very fast uh, and many people told me it is very, very, very touch to read it. So, basically in this course, I am going to fill up more, more in between and uh, this is a good opportunity for me also because uh, I am preparing a second edition of this book. Okay, and one more thing, when uh, homological algebra, uh, basic homological algebra, I will deal with later part of the course. At that time, I will also use this uh, pamphlet, TFR mathematical pamphlet, uh, homological methods in commutative algebra. And uh, actually, you can download this from a TFR website. Website with that. Let me start recalling some of the things which you probably know, but I want to be very sure. And also, I want to take this opportunity to set up the notation. Uh, as you know, notation is very important and that if you have a good notation, you can avoid many confusions. L notations, definitions and examples, this will be the more stress on this course, you will see the theorems will come out of this. Uh, uh, it will be easier to prove theorems if your notation is clear, if your definitions are clear and the examples you have dealt with, they are more and more wide range examples. So, notations, so all rings are commutative, so rings in this course for us are commutative. And I will also assume they have unity and that usually I will write it 1. When I want to specify, okay, the, the uh, notations or rings I will use normally as A, B, C and sometimes also R, S. And uh, usually I will use the letter A for the ring and 1 is 1A. One when there is a chance of confusion, I will specify it. Okay. So now you would have studied in your first course, there are prime ideals, right? That is, in fact, you would study it that there are maximal ideals when the ring is non-zero. 
right that was Guru's theorem. So I am going to denote spec A, this is the set of all prime ideals. in A and usually I will write the German letters to, to denote the ideals and prime ideal therefore German P. Initially you might find difficult or you might get irritated but that I can't help because all these books which I am going to, oh, another book I didn't say was the Jacobson's book on, on uh, not the basic algebra but the earlier books, uh, the three volumes, uh, abstract lectures on abstract algebra 1, 2, 3. So, P is the prime ideal. This is the set of all prime ideals and this contains uh, maximal ideals, SPM. This is a set of all maximal ideals, M m maximal so these are the maximal with respect to the inclusion so among all ideals in a that I, so the ideals in a that set sometimes i'll denote by ia this is the set of ideals this set has as a order, uh, namely the inclusion. When I say order, uh, most of you probably used to know partial order, but my objection to that is that partial word is not doing anything. And if you see the books written before 1950, for example, if you see the book by Hausdorff, it's order. Order means reflexive relation, it's a relation, reflexive, transitive, and Antisymmetry. So, such a set with such a relation is called an ordered set. And this IA is an ordered set ordered with respect to inclusion. And the maximal elements in order set is clear what is the definition, right? So, these maximal ideals are precisely the maximal elements in this ordered set. And you know, your your ordered set may have maximal element, may not have maximal element. But here we have used cruel theorem to show that if a ring is non-zero, then it has a maximal ideal. So this set is non-empty. This is cruel theorem. Very important theorem. Uh, also, if you recall, it has it has used Zorn's lemma. The Zorn's lemma is a big, big tool and abstract. So, usually the philosophy is as far as possible one should avoid using Zorn's lemma. But as you know, many times it is not possible to avoid. Mathematics will not go without Zorn's lemma. So, whenever necessary, we, sh we should use, and whenever, whenever possible, we should not use Zorn's lemma. So, there is also many of the references I read, they abuse Zorn's lemma in the sense that when it is not necessary, also they use it. You know that Zorn's lemma, if you use Zorn's lemma, the proofs are existential and not, not algorithmic. So, present day, as most, as you know, most traces on algorithms, we should avoid Zorn's lemma wherever possible. Okay. And then you learn every maximal ideal is a prime ideal. That means you have this containment. And you would have seen example, this containment could be proper. Then that means there are prime ideals which are not maximal ideals. Okay. For example, if you have an integral domain, a zero ideal is prime, but it is not maximal if your integral domain is not a field. Right? And integral domain precisely means. 0 is a prime ideal. Okay. So, later on as the course progresses, later on I am going to put more structure on this spec A. 
this is called a prime spectrum. of A and this is with additional structure I will put right now it is just a set ordered set actually this I is also lattice so some of these words are uh, you might have not heard formally, but as you go on, you can pick up the definitions. It is useful language and uh, okay, prime spectrum. So, the additional structure is for example, I am going to uh, you put a topology, I will make it a topological space or even more that we will we'll keep. So, it becomes a geometric object to study and then this interplay will become commutative algebra, algebraic geometry that will become very important to study. Okay, this SPM is called a maximal spectrum. Okay, so now, so when we have a prime ideal P. you have a local ring associated to that namely a localized p and with the local ring for every local ring there is a field associated to that namely the residue field so this is local ring at p and usually kp this is the residue field at P and we have natural maps A to A localized at P and A P to K P. This is the inclusion. So, this is not this is yes. This is a residue field, not inclusion. Sorry. On the other hand, also we have this A mod P. This is the residue class ring. And and. Uh, uh, residue class ring and this residue field what is the relation this is the quotient field right this this one is the quotient field of this a by p so this is a natural inclusion map here so this is the quotient field normally a light quotient field as q of a by p this is the residue map here Uh, more on this you will get to show it when I when I uh, start giving some proofs ok. Ok now you would have I just want to recall a definition of a cruel dimension. And every time I will not use the word cruel, uh, cruel was the guy uh, cruel was a professor who actually propose this algebraic definition uh, looking at the geometric definitions geometric definitions are older and and they were more intuitive also uh, so cruel introduced this algebraic definition and okay so let me uh, so if you have an ideal a ideal in a Then we have this residue class ring A by A. Oh, before uh, before. Uh, so, what is the cruel dimension of the ring A? That I will denote simply by dim A. And one should not get confused with the vector space dimension because 
normally vector space i dimension i denote by capital dm and there is a suffix for example we have a vector space u over k where k is the field then this dimension you know already right this is the uh, the cardinality of a basis so this dimension i will denote by small d okay well, this is look at the chains of the prime ideals so p0 contained in p1 proper chains pr these are the chain in in spec a and take their length so length is r so r this is look at the integers r natural numbers r so that there is a chain of length r in the spectrum and take the supremum now there are several question supremum may may not exist right so uh, it is from this definition it is not clear how do we compute a dimension for example now how do you think about dimension so in the first few lectures i am going to specialize the rings and find another ways to another characterizations of the dimension which will enable us to compute it and that is the idea of this so first topic i will take take up with where the rings are special rings are polynomial rings over a field or rings are finite type algebras over a field those that i will do it the first then i will do local for local rings and then we will do general uh, dimension theorem for the noetherian rings okay so this will take some time okay so this is the dimension crude dimension of the ring a now if you have any idea a the dimension of when i when you write dimension of a that is by definition dimension of the residue class ring so co dimension codim codim is usually first defined for prime ideal so that is for co dimension of a prime ideal is by definition the dimension of the local ring which is obviously the supremum of the lengths of the prime ideals which are contained in p because when you localize the prime ideals which are not contained in p they will become unit ideals so that is the this is also called the height of p denoted by htp height of p and then once you have defined it for a prime ideal then you can write it for arbitrary ideal codim a is by definition minimum of codim where p contains a minimum over p contains a that is co dimension similarly for module if i okay so modules a modules i will usually denote by letters v w etc i am not going to denote by m n what you are used to it probably i am going to denote by v w etc because they are vector spaces vector spaces over a ring right the same definition only thing only two only assumption we don't have is the base ring is may not be a field and therefore the modules may not be free modules so modules may may not even be finitely generated and so on right but it is a good feeling that when you denote a vector space is similar notation okay so dimension of a module is by definition dimension of the annihilator of annihilator of a module is a what is annihilator of a module annihilator of a module is by definition all those elements of the ring a which kills everybody in v 
a times x is 0 for all x in v. This is an annihilator and annihilator is an ideal in the ring. So, we already defined uh, dimension of the ideal. So, in other words, this is the dimension of the ring A by annihilator of A, annihilator of V. Similarly, you have a codim. This is codim, annihilator of V. Okay, and the most one of the most important property of the dimension, if you know from topology, geometry, etc., that it is a local definition is local. What it means in algebraic is dimension of the ring is precisely the sup dimension of a localized p. This is if you if you study geometry topology more carefully, this is what the local will mean. I when I have a topology on that, I will explain you why is it same like the earlier one. Okay. So now, before I uh, uh, close it, uh, we should at least know dimension of some rings. So let us see some examples. All these may be repetition for you, but it is better to recall. Uh -huh. So. So, for example, some examples. Dimension of a field, usually I will denote the capital K later uh, to be field. Uh, dimension of field is 0 because there is only one prime ideal in the uh, field namely 0. So, there is no chain, so chain length is 0. So, it is 0. 2 dimension of z ring of integers is 1 because you know every non zero prime ideal is maximum. So, the chain will start at 0 and the moment you go next one it is a prime ideal definitely prime numbers are there and the next one it does not go. So, dimension is 1. And there is nothing special about Z, this will work for any PID because you know every PID uh, in a PID every non zero prime ideal is maximum. So, the typical examples of a PIDs are obviously Z polynomial ring in one variable over a field K and polynomial ring in uh, uh, power series ring in one variable over a field. These are the typical examples of PIDs. And essentially, these are the only examples. Okay, this we will we will check sometime. No, a little bit more. Uh, these are also Euclidean domains. These are also Euclidean domains. E D. Right? You would have heard the Euclidean domain word, no? So these are the only examples of Euclidean domains. There are more examples of E D, but Euclidean function. These are the essentially only examples. Okay, third one, I am this now this question raises what do we do with k x 1 if you have a polynomial ring in several variables k x 1 to x n or power series ring in several variables. This will correspond to what we have studied in analytic geometry R n or C n right and uh, the dimension we have been dealing with I do not know in college days or uh, school days the dimension should be n right. So, this is the first we will prove the dimension of these rings is n. And more, more generally we will try to see we will try to compute dimension of now if you have a field k, k is the field then and suppose a is k algebra 
of finite type. Everybody knows this term, I think. Right? This means as an algebra over k, it is generated by finitely many elements. Or equivalently, this A is a residue class ring of a polynomial ring in finitely many variables. So, this is A is generated as a algebra. So, the notation will be this k small x1 to small xn. These are algebra generators of A. This is small x1 to xn may not be algebraically independent. So, but in any case, there is a surjective k algebra homomorphism from the polynomial ring in n variables capital X1 to Xn to this where Xis go to small Xis. This is surjective. This is evaluation map. Any polynomial evaluated at the small x1 to x. So, I will be very, very careful always uh, to write my variables as capital letters. And small letters are arbitrary letters in the, in the ring, right. So, and one more thing. So, when I say uh, algebra, finite algebra. So, suppose k is a field, k is field and a finite k algebra. Finite means finitely generated module, does not mean cardinality finite, finitely generated as a k module. And even these earlier considered finite type over a field or finite over a field, the base ring need not be a field. One can make a definition when we have arbitrary base ring R and algebra over R. When do I say algebra uh, that algebra is finite type over R? That means as an algebra over R, it is generated by finitely many elements or equivalently, it is the quotient of a polynomial ring over R in finitely many variables. Similarly, finite over R means as a module over R, it is finitely generated and obviously finite will imply finite type. But not conversely, but not this and in this, this case is simple to write, this is k x1 plus 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 k xn. This is what finite means, that is small x1 to xn are k module generators of A. So, this notation is also clear that we are taking a k linear combination of xis, all k linear combinations of xis and that will exhaust A. So, one typical example which we will deal very often is take any, now let us do any ring R, R is any ring. And let us take a polynomial ring in one variable Rx. This is obviously finite type R algebra. It is not finite, but it is finite type. See the more, more often you use this word, it will become more and more clearer. Okay, now if I take a polynomial F in Rx, non-zero non-zero polynomial and monic. Monic means the top degree coefficient is 1. So, monic of degree let us say n. So, that means f looks like x power n plus a 1 x power n minus 1 or a n minus 1 x power n minus 1 plus 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 a 1 plus a 0. This a 0 to a n minus 1, they are in R, they are the coefficients of and this n is the degree. And if you go mod the residue class ring, if you go mod f, ideal generated by f, this is the notation for ideal generated by f. 
this is and let us denote this is a surjective map from Rx to this natural surjective map and let us denote image of capital X to be small x. So, this is R small x. So, x is the image of capital X in this Aristotle class. Now, 1 x x power n minus 1 this is a generating set of let us call this residue class ring as A. This generates the R module A. This is because any polynomial you can divide by a monic polynomial and have a remainder. You do not need field for this, you do not the coefficient should be it should be monic and not only it generates a module it is a, it's a basis this is actually a basis this is R basis R basis of it. and because the remainders are unique right. This is a very 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 important example which will be used again and again. Okay. So, in this case I will keep saying so one says that if I say that a finite algebra of rank n that means it is a free module and the and you probably have learned a theorem that if I have a module free module over a commutative ring then the rank that is the number of uh, cardinality of a basis is well defined and that is called the rank of a module and this is not true for the ring if the ring is not commutative. So, the modules free modules can have bases which have different cardinalities. So, commutativity is also very important. So, this I will use it uh, uh, sometime. Now, I think we should stop